Righto, so let's get into it. Um, welcome along, you guys in Tallinn and the guys here in Helsinki. So today um, we're going to do some hot linking. So we're going to show you the basics of how hot linking works, a um, couple of different ways of doing it, and uh, the benefits of, of both, and some things to look out for. So um, what we've got really is this little building that we've been working on over the last few weeks and uh, this is where we've we've got to last time after the uh, zone session so we've got just this this little building rectangular building and i've also got a copy of the building out here but with the front wall taken out um, and the zone because what we want to do is maybe look at some options as to how we um, design the front of this building, so whether we're going to continue with this idea of a straight wall or whether we do something a bit different. So, um, the hot linking, there's a couple of ways of doing it, um, and the first one I'll show you is something that they call the iceberg method, because we go and we build within the same file, so rather than having separate files all the time that we're going back and forth to, we can use some negative stories and build our um, model from that. So if we go here, we will see, I click on that, that that's brought up a whole lot of linked stuff here and I've all got square square um, dots on it. So this means that it's a hot linked file. So I'm just going to delete that. There's my delete button going there. Delete that. Okay, it's going to take a while. Maybe not a good idea. <laughs> um, oh, come on. Okay, so that one's gone. And I've also got in the background here. Uh, um, no, I'll just delete that as well for now. And then we'll go through the process of putting them back in. Right. So now both these files, or both these buildings are both the same. So we've got this shell that we want to do something with. So um, what I've done is on the left-hand side here, I'll build this one up using this iceberg method, and on the right-hand side, we'll go and look at it using like a link file type method. So this one here, what I've done is I've come down and I've created some negative stories. So if you look over here, I've created uh, negative two and negative three being option A, and that's basically carrying on with a straight facade, a door and a little um, roof over the door and our ceiling and everything in the back here. And option B is dividing it into two separate tenancies basically with a, a door entering from each side here. Now, we what we're going to do here. So if we look at this in 3D, even just to get you an idea of how that looks, we've got our building up here, and then we've got these two negative stories down below with the bits that we want to bring in. Now we can do this, and there's lots of ways. It's not a problem. We can have have all these negative stories, and then if we want to look at anything in 3D while we're working and only see the new building. We can turn on our cutaway plane and set our cut plane to wherever we want. So originally it was um, where are we? cut plane and finalize. No. Okay, so we'll delete all cutting planes. Right, so this is it in its natural format. And then if we want to create a cut, cut plane, we come here and zoom up and we can hide all the negative stories in our 3D view so that when we go into 3D, we're only looking at what we want to see and all the workings are in the background. So if we go back to our floor plan, ground floor, and what I've done to help this is I've set up two layers in here called option A and option B. And I've also set up two um, 
view sets, uh, layer, sorry, layer, layer combinations called option A and option B. Now, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be laying the same information in the same place in the model. So sometimes if you do that normally with creating different layers, it causes all sorts of problems. Um, so what we've done is when we choose option A layer combination, I have set the layer um, priority for the actual option A layer higher than for the option B layer. So that means that anything that's on the option A layer will take priority over anything on the B layer with regards to uh, intersections and things like that. And then conversely here, I've got option B and we've turned option B up to 10 and option A at one for that layer combination. So we'll cancel out of that. Um, now those layers are important because when we bring a um, hot link into the model, we also assign it a master layer. So that master layer is best to be a layer that you don't use for something else because when you turn that layer off, it hides the whole hot link. So generally the hot link will work by um, the layers act just as part of the file. So if you, if you hide all the external walls, if it's on the same layer in a hot link, it will hide. So what we're going to do now is go up here to File, to External Content, and Place Hot Link. Now we'll start with Option A, and we'll call it Option A. And it's a good idea too with this master ID to name our hot links something that's um, recognisable or sensible for the project rather than just leaving it blank just for management down the line as things get complicated. Now we go into here and select our module and we've got no source files ready in our file so we're going to click the new module and we can select from a file so from a locally hosted file or server hosted file or from a teamwork project even so we're just going to go from a file hold on it's on the other screen so I'll bring that across now I have set up another file here called Oh, no, we're not going to do that one. Sorry, we're going to do it this way. So we're going into my um, file that we're using at the moment, which is this uh, in Jedi course intro and select. Now it's giving us the option of what story do we want to bring in or whether we want to bring them all in. Now, if we're working on, say, uh, a project like uh, Viri, which is like, um, say, a lot of buildings going into a, a site, and maybe the buildings are repetitive or they're over multiple stories, we can actually bring the whole building in um, by choosing all stories. So we don't have to go and import story by story and place it. So we can choose all stories if we just want to be placing, say, buildings in a landscape, things like that. But in this case, we just want a single story and we want to choose option A. So let's go OK. And got that select. Now, we basically just want to leave these defaults as they are. Um, there's no real reason we need to change those. Uh, additional offset is where we would lift the um, hot link up. So maybe we're working on a split level building or or it's something that's up in the air. So we could lift it up in this point here, but we not, don't need that. So then we've got everything here, option A, and place hot link. And hold on. So it's brought me up this little tab box, the layer's hidden, so we want to show the layer. Yep. So while it thinks it's going to bring that hot link in and place it in the right spot. Now the beauty of this method is, this iceberg method, is that um, we're working basically in the same vertical plane, or we can work in the same vertical plane. So, why did that not show up? Oh, hold on, sorry, there's a th uh, thing over here. Let's go through that. Um, it's coming. So, right, I click out of that. So now that's in place as option A, and then I'll set up a view set over here for it. So that's how option A view set looks. Now, if I go to option B, I've turned off the option A layer and everything disappears on. So we come back to here. 
and it's there. Now, if I go to ground floor, it disappears because it's option A, so that, that layer is actually hidden in that view set. Now, if we go back to that, uh, what I was saying, so option A, this is our minus two floor with this option. Now, we can turn on our trace reference and choose the floor that we're actually working on above us so that we can accurately build this little hot link up and when it lands, it's in exactly the right place. Um, so we go back up to our ground floor. Now we want to place our hot link. Now we're going to change to option B and call that option B. And we want to change our module, a new module from file. Select option B, OK. Select and place hot link. Uh, show layer. And just, yeah. So now we've got option B, so we can easily now flick between option B and option A in 2D. And now if we want to go into 3D even, we can use option A, and then we can change our view set option B, and easily change the um, the option or the, the alternative view to this over and off and in. And so that acts like just as part of that model, and there's no problems with you know walls sitting over each other because we've given option B higher priority in this. So, yeah. Okay, so we've done that one now. If we go back to our ground floor, so that's basically our iceberg method. Now, if we go and do this one, we will try linking to an external file. So, if we, this is basically the same process file, external content, place hot link, um, change module. So, now we want to go to another new module from file. And I've got this one set up in hot linked options. Select option A, OK. Select, and we'll put that on the right layer. And we'll call that option A1. And now uh, place hot link. Show layer. Center. So uh, we'll just place it in the original location, which is actually the same location as this part of one here. We'll just paste. But that's actually not where we want it because we want it on the other building. So we can just drag it across. And place it, and that's right there. Um, now with be with these hot links too from external files or any file is that if our building was on an angle or whatever, it's easy. We can just rotate these hot links to wherever we want. Um, and we can like in a project like an apartment, say, where we've got repeating units, we can create one hot link and we can then just stack them side by side top of each other um, throughout the whole building and only use the one, the one hot link for how big our apartment is. So then we can concentrate on just the one file and making sure that that's right and knowing that whenever we put it into the file or into the, uh, the host file, that everything will update correctly. So that's that one. So we've got our option A's here, but now option B. So we'll go and place another one here, file, extra content place. Change module, so we've got a new module. Sweet. Uh, 
going to get across. Right, so now we've got both those buildings side by side showing that you know basically the same same thing but just achieved two different ways. Now if we are using this linked file method and we want to change something, the easiest way to do it is to go into the um, grab the hot link, make sure that the grouping is on so that everything in the hot link turns up and then we can just like basically right click and um, bring up hot link module and then we can edit module in separate Archicad. And that shall open up another Archicad file, um, allowing us to make any changes that happening. But if we, well, while we wait for that to load, just say we, so in the other method, like this um, iceberg one, we'll just, all we need to do is come down here and make a changes. So maybe we don't want the entry area to be so deep. So all we need to do is come in here. And change that but for that to be um, effective upstairs we first need to save our file so let's save and then if we go back up to option B let's save Come So long. come on. And so we go back up and then we need to um, update our hotlink itself. So it's not going to just automatically update. So if I go back up to here, if option B, and if you know, actually what we'll do is we'll just put a little um, origin point just there so we can see when we go back up that option B is actually still as it was previously. Let's see what's happening here. No, it's not happening. Okay. Let's get that loading. Um, so we can go up into here, file, external content. Now we go into Hotlink Module Manager. And it does a check of the model and it's telling us that um, the file with the source Aki had been Jedi course intro has been modified. So we need to select that and then come down here to update and OK. Now we'll go away and hunt through the file and bring back the correct hotlink information. Sorry, this is another thing on my other screen here. Okay. And that's now made that the same as what we did downstairs. So if we look across to this other one, yeah, right. Slip across to this other one. And this is the one that we've done in a separate file. Now the downside of probably doing it in a separate file is you don't have the easy reference information of the upper story that like to know where all the pile um 
columns are and uh, external walls and things like that. So probably good practice in that instance is quite often to, I haven't done it here, but is to like put some guidelines in from where you're working from so you know the external parameters of the room that you're working with or whatever. Now, again, if we uh, change this, then all we have to do is save this file and we go through the same process of updating that in, in the other file. But you'll notice here that actually this file doesn't actually look the same as um, the, the host file. We've got some different wall settings. Now, what I've got up here is this is where it gets a wee bit tricky is because um, of all the attribute settings. Um, this is why it's important that when you create a hotlink file that we work from a consistent template or, a, or the same file as you're working from because if anything changes, if anything's different, uh, on here, like if you have your layers labeled differently, named differently, or if they're in a different order so that the index numbers are different, when you bring the hotlink file into the host file, it does funny things. So it will like, um, it will create new layers in the, oh, look at here. it'll create new layers or, um, attributes, um, composites, things like that, so into the host file if they don't match. So that's why it's really, really important to be structured in the way we work when we're working with hotlinks to have the, the same file with the same layers, same composites, same materials, colors, everything. Otherwise, we will cause ourselves some problems. Um, just as an example here, if we go into the element attributes, of this composite and, oh, of the screen. So we are using double block Yeah, we're using that one. Um, so that's all set up. It's 274 mils thick. It's got tile on the outside, 100 mil of timber, 50 mil of concrete, 100 mil of sand, and 12 mil of tile. Um, but if we were to change that, just say we made that 50 mils, all those walls have now changed. We save that. And then go back across here. And external hotlink manager. Let's go check. <coughs> so that one's being modified, so let's update it. Okay. Sorry, we have to get that because there's something wrong there. Um, so where's anyway? And so if we come back across here, okay, now what's happened is that wall is still at double block, it's 274. So the parameters of the host file override the parameters of the um, hot link file generally. So, um, but if they don't, like if quite often it will, um, we go back up into here, options, element attributes, composite attribute manager. Um, so if we look at our composites especially, so you'll see that the last um, composite here is actually this double block, double block cavity plus plaster. Now that's one that's come in from the hotlink file. So anything that you bring in from the hotlink file that's not already in the master in the host file, it will start creating uh, layers or 
attributes. So you know, whether it's a layer, uh, a line type, a fill, or a composite, whatever, um, it will create one. So then um, we can run into problems later on with things not recognizing you know, library parts or composites or dimensions being different, things like that. So it's, that's why it's really, really important to be working from a consistent template and why we stress that any additions or alterations to that are done through a BIM manager or a project manager on the on the project rather than just doing something yourself and um, causing us all sorts of strife later on. So um, yeah, hopefully that has um, given you a bit of an insight into Hotlinks. There's probably a lot more that we can go into, but I think uh, as long as you know the main just of how to work them and the different ways of using them. Um, sometimes this this method here, this snowball method, is this iceberg method is quite good. That um, we just stack everything up in, in negative stories, and you can quickly switch between um, showing the different options, things like that, um, rather than building up a file with lots and lots of options, you know, all around here. And um, by smart use of our layer combinations and our priorities, there are no problems with um, display um, or display outputs and stuff like that. So thanks all for coming along, and we will catch you again next week. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.